What up, Space Fam? Goes in here from Anime Outpour, and I'm back at it again to discuss the latest One Piece chapter. And we got a lot to talk about from the crazy reason to why Buggy became a Yonko. We got way more details on that since the spoiler video, to what's really happening with the Straw Hats and the final Straw Hat, and more. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you do enjoy these One Piece reviews and want to keep them coming, you know what to do channel parking with it and smash that like button. Always be a smashing Pirate King rather than a passing Orochi, and you will be rewarded with YouTube fireworks. If you haven't, make this the video you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications or you will miss future One Piece videos and updates. And now without further ado, let's jump into it spoilers and all. As those of you who saw the spoiler vid know, the title of this one is Cross Guild, which is Buggy's new and amazing organization, which we'll get to in more detail soon. Katakuri is present in the cover art here, which is a nice touch. Just as Wano is ending, we're getting some pretty epic action in the cover story, which I appreciate. And these cover stories really lend to Oda's world building and make the world feel alive in a way that a lot of manga don't. Sometimes it just feels like the outside world is frozen when the protagonist is fighting the epic villain of the arc, but in One Piece that's never the case. The chapter starts with Raizo and Shinobu recovering from their Green Bull injuries. They definitely still look like mummies, and it's said that Green Bull had a point about Kaido's presence keeping others at bay. I said as much too when he brought it up initially, and now that word could get out about Pluton being there, it's hard to see Momo and friends defending Wano against someone like Blackbeard or the world government if they ever got the time to attack. Kinemon is here apologizing profusely for being in Kuri when it happened. They tell him not to sweat it though, more casualties were avoided by Momo's bravery. And yes, he was brave, full props for that. But the gag is that Aramaki ran from Shanks, even while it looked the most like Momo might have scared him off. Again, Momo isn't for a rude awakening if another strong character shows up and he thinks he's fine because of how the Aramaki fight went down. They ask about Tsuru and Kinemon lets them know that Tsuru suffered a nasty burn on her face. And I'm thinking to myself, what's with the burn marks in this chapter and in One Piece in general, but more on that later. We get a very sweet moment where Tsuru blushes and says she always wants to be by Kinemon's side. And Kinemon blushes, smiling like an idiot, saying that she's as gorgeous as ever. A great payoff for this plot thread and his happiness is contagious here. Oda did a great job of illustrating Kinemon's overjoyed expression. Even Inuarashi is like, even puppy love isn't that sappy. Glad Oda got to use a pun like that while Inu is still in the picture. Raizo is hilarious too, wishing he were popular and could get a girl like that too, but they just tell him to focus on recovery. Karen shows up asking why she's been summoned. She's pretty carefree at this point, and she's told that she will be the next ruler of the Mokomo Dukedom. You get one of those moments where she doesn't process it right away and is like, okay cool, then after a second she freaks out saying, wait what? And although Inu and Neko won't make the biggest difference against a really strong opponent, it turns out that they will stay in Wano and serve as retainers to protect Momo. Which is good because, as we said, Wano needs all the added protection it can get. It's almost as if anyone Luffy crosses paths with becomes a major player in history, since Neko cites how she's grown very dependable after her adventures with Luffy and the others, so much so that she's definitely got what it takes to lead the next generation. It seems like this is possibly Oda's way of handling some people's disappointment at Carrot not joining the crew by giving her arguably the highest position she could get, and you know that she'll probably appear again later as an ally to help Luffy, so we have that to look forward to as well. Carrot says some of the others are way stronger, and the three musketeers come in saying yeah, and she can trust them to protect the country for her. Wanda also agrees that it was a wise decision, because Pedro's will lives in her more than in anyone. Still though, in a world like One Piece, where the strongest usually rule, it's a bit strange to see Carrot in the leader position, and it doesn't help that she's only about 15 years old, but let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. We see Zunisha reminding us that when Carrot shows up to help Luffy for a giant war down the line, it's likely Zunisha will make its appearance again and complete what it started in Wano. We then get Sukiyaki telling Momo and Hiyori that he's their grandpa. Sukiyaki is sorry and says Momo really looks like his dad. And of course, as we may have expected, after losing so many, Momo and Hiyori are so glad to find out they still got their grandpa, aka they still got some family. Both Momo and Hiyori shed tears, and Hiyori tells her grandpa there's no need to apologize. Then we get quite possibly my favorite part in the chapter aside from the whole cross guild stuff which we'll get into. Based on the scabbard expression, Sukiyaki says he takes it the rest knew it was him. And most of them are like, yeah, but it wasn't their place to say anything. Meanwhile, Kinemon is quiet. We then jump into his internal dialogue and he's shocked beyond belief by the revelation. I definitely laughed out loud at this moment, I will definitely miss such hilarious 
hilarious Kinemon moments. Sukiyaki says he'll pass on what he knows and then he'd like to live anonymously among the people. Kinemon says of course, while still thinking to himself how unbelievable the revelation is. On to the Straw Hats just chilling like villains. Robin then points out that Pluton is here and Frankie is really affected by that, his veins popping, sweat forming, the works. Luffy is really calm though for his part and says he doesn't want it. And again, the question comes up, why would Odin unleash it? From my view, I see the benefit for preventing others from coming to Wano if the weapon was activated and ready to be used and not just there for the taking. Plus, we know it's probably part of the prophecy and all of the ancient weapons will probably come up and be used by the end of the story. This is when Shinobu comes in, not only fully recovered, but as is pointed out, she got a glow up that Sanji is obsessed with. She's skinny and tall again, adding another attractive One Piece girl to the series, and that is always appreciated. Tama says she'll train with Shinobu and asks if she can join the Straw Hats down the line, and Luffy says sure if she keeps up her ninjutsu training. I know some speculated about Tama coming with the Straw Hats, but I think most of us knew it wouldn't happen. Still, it's nice for her that she has something to look forward to, and this seems to mirror Luffy and Shanks from the beginning of the series. Who knows, maybe Tama will also decide to do her own thing before she ever joins Luffy. We see Caribou spying, excited about the Pluton in Wano news, and he knows a certain someone who would love to hear about this. Let me know who do you think he is talking about here, even though I'm sure a lot of people would want this information. We see Momo going through his day with a stoic look on his face as they are planning out the restoration of Wano. He finally shows his excitement when he goes to see Zoro, but no one is there. The Straw Hats have already left the building. Even Yamato is nowhere to be seen. It's funny how they said goodbye to everyone but Momo and Kinemon, the ones they knew the most, and as a result it would probably be the hardest to say goodbye to them. But I'm guessing we'll get a usual One Piece moment where they run up to wave them goodbye at least. We then jump to Kid, Luffy, and Law, and let's enjoy this because it will be a long time before these three ally up again if they ever do. Law is practically a given for a future team up, but Kid is more of a wild card. Since the alliance is over, they all feel like they gotta take different routes. After all, they're rivals again. Law tells them to pick where to go while choosing the most direct route himself. The other two choose the middle, aka the east direction, with no real rationale behind their decision. Kid wins a draw and so it looks like Luffy will be going southeast. And it's interesting to see that Luffy throws being an emperor in Kid's face, saying I'm the emperor and I should be the best at drawing lots. Clearly Luffy has fully accepted his role, which is fun to see. He totally could have been called an emperor by others and not really used the title himself, but it's cool to see him actually embracing this title. Kid lumps Luffy in with the other emperors by saying something like, you arrogant emperors, but then he says someone angers him even more than Luffy and shows Buggy's image in the paper. Buggy looks awesome here, and not only that, Mihawk and Crocodile are shown on the Cross Guild poster as well. You know about this if you saw the spoiler video, but seeing the new images is great, and especially how the characters react to the Buggy news. I love how Luffy talks about Buggy in contrast to how the others view him. But at first, Luffy is just shocked about seeing Crocodile and Mihawk and how they're supposedly working on their Buggy. We even see sweat on the usually calm Luffy's face. Zoro says he can't imagine Mihawk doing this, but of course, I'm sure that Mihawk has his reasons, and besides, many of us did expect this and we're really hoping for this. Law then says if he's capable of commanding men like this, then Buggy's definitely a worthy new emperor. Now that alone makes him worthy of being an emperor in Law's eyes, but it doesn't stop there. First Luffy says Buggy is a moron and is confused about how this happened, but then Kid says Cross Guild is also issuing bounties on Marines, which I love just as much as the fact that Mihawk and Crocodile are now on Buggy's crew. And keep in mind, even Whitebeard was down to work with Buggy when it served his interest at Marineford. So it's not that hard to believe that Mihawk and Crocodile would do the same even if it turns out to be a temporary partnership. But back to the marine bounties, and Kid pretty much says what we're all thinking, and I quote, Now those navy dogs have to wash their backs too. The hunters have become the hunted, end quote. And now we get to impatiently wait for hype bounty reveals like Kobe, Sakazuki's, Garps, and so many more. They point out how the world really changed when they were on this isolated island, again going back to how Oda makes his world seem so alive. The rest of the world doesn't just freeze as events are happening with Luffy. I also really love how Law gives Kid's crew a copy of the road poneglyph, saying they earned it. I love the respect shown between these pirates, even though they are rivals. Then Killer and Kid talk about how if they want to stay ahead in the quest for the 
the One Piece, they gotta go after the man marked by flames. Is it Sabo? Is it a new character? I have no idea, but Oda gives us another thing to wonder about. In the comments of the spoiler video, someone even said that this might be the man Shanks was talking about with the five elders, meaning the man marked by flames. And that's funny to me just because I feel like the fandom's opinion on who Shanks was talking about has changed so many times with every new bit of information. Luffy doesn't know who Kid's talking about, and Law seems uncharacteristically serious and mysterious, implying that he knows something. Kid just laughs though, saying it looks like he's ahead of Luffy. Then we catch up to Yamato. Yamato is on the roof as Momo and Kinemon find out. In the spoilers, it wasn't clear if the Straw Hats already left without her, but now it's clear that we didn't see them leave to see yet. Yamato says, yeah, I've made up my mind. I'm about to head over to Luffy and the gang. It's finally time for me to live like Odin did, heroic and free. And so it obviously looks like Yamato's joining, but the funny thing is, nothing has really changed in this chapter in regards to Yamato. Yamato wanted to join before too, and made that clear. And we still didn't see Luffy officially accept the offer since he woke up. So I'm hopeful, but in my view, it's still not confirmed until Yamato is on the Straw Hat ship, sailing with them, and Wano is out of sight. And we'll hopefully see if that's the case sooner rather than later. But that is it for this chapter. The Buggy and Mihawk stuff was amazing, the rest was a good unwinding of Wano plot points, and we are about ready to set sail again in the next chapter. If you did enjoy this review and want to keep them coming, you know what to do, channel the Pirate King within and smash that like button. Always be a smashing king rather than a passing Orochi, and you will be rewarded with YouTube fireworks. If you haven't, make this the video you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications or you will miss future One Piece videos and updates. By the way, in the spoiler video, I asked you guys to vote on the Anime Uproar Instagram about who has the higher bounty, Luffy or Buggy now, and out of thousands of votes, 74% said Luffy, meaning that Buggy would have a bounty lower than 3 billion. In this case, I'm of the opinion of the minority, since I find it hard to believe that Buggy as a Yonko and after all of this would have a bounty less than Kid and Law. But let me know your thoughts below in the comments and if they changed after this chapter. What is your guess for Buggy's new bounty? And is anyone else wondering how he can pay for marine bounties? I'm thinking to myself, how awesome would it be if he found Captain John's treasure finally, and that's how he can fund all of this awesome insanity. Can't wait to find out, but while you wait for the next chapter to drop, feel free to check out my growing One Piece playlist that includes videos on all the Yonko, Warlords, Admirals, Mythical Zones, and much more. Link to that is in the description on screen right now. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you, I really appreciate you, and until next time, see you soon. Space Cowboys.